What's going on people, Jojo Savidis here, founder of the Hip Hop Orchestra, as well as the host of the Hip Hop Orchestra Presents podcast. And I got a really exciting announcement to finally make with everyone, is that we have our very first official sponsor for the podcast. Now they are an amazing, amazing company called Elden's Vault, who are extremely dedicated in bringing you the very best in officially licensed merchandise from pop culture. And when I mean the very best, I mean the very best. They provide things like key rings, caps, t-shirts, to Funko Pops, to statues from all over, such as DC, Marvel, Disney, The Mandalorian, Harry Potter, music artists from all over the place, and they are ridiculously good. I've got a couple of things to show you on offer at the moment. This truck with their stuff is amazing. So, t-shirts, like I mentioned, like I'm wearing right now, it's got Rocky, right here, which I absolutely love. Or like I said, also got Funko Pops as well, 3.75 inches and 10 inches. I've got a couple of 10 inches right here for you. I've got Post Malone right here, and I've also got Biggie right here, who I absolutely love. These are so sick. Odin's Vault, trust me, they are amazing. Now I'm gonna leave the link below in the video right here, and also in the description below as well in all the future videos from the podcast. But trust me, Odin's Vault are amazing. Website is www.odensvault.co.uk. Get in touch with them now and start buying ASAP. But also, before I forget as well, I just want to say the biggest, biggest thank you to Olden's Vault for sponsoring the podcast. It means the absolute world to me. Thank you. And trust me, get in touch with them right now. And I hope you enjoy today's episode. And peace. Of the Hip Hop Walker Presents. I'm joined by honestly an amazing guest today, CEO of the amazing company Liberty, Alex Goat. How are you? You okay? I am well, thank you. And Merry Merry Christmas, if that's <laughs> where we're almost at already. Yeah, Merry Christmas to you as well. <laughs> How's things been for you? Been okay? Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, we're all racing to the end of what's been an absolutely mad year, but yeah, all good, thank you. Oh, I'm glad to hear. I mean, how has this been year, year been for you? Must have been absolutely incre- uh, incredibly busy. If I wasn't yeah. already. <laughs> It's been, I mean, it's been, a, it's been a very interesting time, I guess, working in the kind of what we've got one foot, Liberty's one foot in the creative industries, one foot in the social enterprise world. And so, yeah, both, uh, a lot of turbulence in both of those worlds, as in all of our personal lives as well. But yeah, I think it's been, um, I feel really proud of where we've got to by the end of the year. But I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to a few days of not switching on my emails or, or Zoom calls as we can <laughs> I can imagine, you say before, I'll try and be super quick today then. <laughs> oh, no, I'm I know that obviously the offices were in Brixton, yep. they still aren't they? Have you been able to go into the offices as normal or is it mainly at home now that you work? Yes, yeah, so we moved all of our working um, to remote as soon as we went into lockdown. Um, and for us, it's kind of interesting because Liberty, you know, part of our the way that our creative work is made is in collaboration with young people, both like physically and digitally. And our like, physical space has always been such an important part of our story, mm-hmm. being a free co working space for under 25s. Um, and just a place where young people can come and you know meet other really interesting creative people and be mentored. So like yeah, it was kind of weird not having the office in that format. But we we've we've done all of our kind of co-creation work digitally, back in the office for a short period of time, back home, in our in our you know mm. as, as we kind of all are. But I think hoping to get back into to real life working together. Of when course. We can. I mean, how, how have you found that transition from going to that more digital um, workplace for you? Yeah, I think it's been, it's been, there's been like opportunities and challenges, right? I think so many, so much of being able to be your whole self coming to work gives you the, like the flexibility that, you know, that the current situation has given lots of us who work normally in offices nine to five and spend lots of time commuting, I think has been really valuable. Um, I think communication is always kind of different, but I think as a creative business, I think what I think has been the most challenging is the creative process. Mm-hmm. Yeah, both from an inspiration point of view, from a collaboration point of view, it's really mad to try and do that when you're all staring at the same four walls all the time. Of course. So, I mean, yeah. how, 
Because obviously you, you obviously you're based well and working with the youth. I mean, how have they found this whole year? I mean, obviously it was difficult anyway before, but how have you like you still like standing at the same four walls for this whole time? How have they felt as well this whole year? Do you know, we did, a, we did a piece just after the first lockdown. We did a bit where we went out to our network and we just kind of asked young people kind of how they're feeling. I think it's such a mix. Mm. You know, I think, um, I think what, what we've seen, and certainly maybe not in the last kind of couple of months, because I do think as winter sets in, people's emotions change. But I do think there was a real mix of people kind of thinking, yeah, you know, yes, I'm lonely. Uh, yes, I'm kind of more worried about my future. Interestingly, there was quite a lot of like self-reflection Mm -hmm. uh, like actually I'm starting to try new things or I'm really spending more time with myself and I realize how important self-care is mm -hmm. so I think that that felt that felt really interesting really positive and I certainly think like the young people that we work with are, are not short of things that they want to try and achieve mm -hmm. so actually it's like well if I can't go out and do that I'm going to try and learn in my bedroom so I think I'm always super impressed at the younger generation's ability to adapt and thrive and it's yeah. all about people who I'm like, how do you do a Zoom call? And like, how do you do all of this? You know, so I think technology is in their favour, but um, I certainly think from what we've, what we've seen over the last kind of couple of months coming into winter is that like uncertainty around jobs, around education, around like your rights of passage and all those things that are missing out on now does take its toll. So yeah, can that, as a teacher, I'm sure that you um, <laughs> you got all of that firsthand as well. Yeah, because me being a teacher, obviously, as well, as you know, that... Um, this just whole year has been absolutely crazy. I mean, you're dealing with so much emotion with the young kids. I work in primary school, in his primary school. Yeah, so working with kids who are between three and four to 11 years old, luckily we're back in school as normal now or as normal as we can be for the time being. Yeah. But it's just that uh, dealing with so much emotion, one minute they're super happy to be back, then they're scared, and then it's just trying to get that balancing act right, isn't it, of make sure they're all right and safe and the rest of it. And... I think I remember when we had the lockdown situation, the first one, where parents were, I, they, did, they didn't realise how hard our job actually was until after, because obviously we're teaching over Zoom and the rest of it. And I go, oh my God, this is so difficult. We didn't realise how hard it actually was. We're so sorry. So dealing with that side of things is, is, is I feel very happy to be able to be able to help inspire the younger generation and just help them to move on with life, which I, which I really love. Yeah, it is mad though, isn't it? I mean, if you're, because I've got a six-year-old daughter and it's really, the stuff that's come into her everyday language and vernacular is just, you know, she's like, oh, well, I can't do that because we're social distancing or is this before the coronavirus? And you just think, <laughs> God, how, like, and actually that you're not really freaked out that there's loads of adults walking around in masks all the time. Like, you know, it's, just, it's amazing how adaptable that, and you know, that, that even younger generation have been around it. Of course. I mean, how, how is your daughter? Is she okay? Yeah, she's yeah. fine. So they kind of, she's like, in that coronavirus bit of school, you know, where they, she was in year one. So they wore home clothes and did, they brought in their own school lunches. So they were like, oh, this is quite fun. But yeah, it's, it, it, the, the, yeah, quite how much life has changed. Mm, of course. You know, for, for everybody. Um, and the expectations of that, I think, is, um, you know, is, is, is really mad. I have every respect for your for your profession and as you say not just like help having kids feel safe but also like the logistics of managing like three or four different you know drop-offs and pickups it's just mad it's just a yeah. mad <laughs> oh thank you but vice versa as well for you being a parent and being a ceo as well of a major company i mean how do you how do you deal with that it must be incredibly difficult uh yeah uh, i mean uh, like we've all had those Zoom calls now where you just, there's no holes barred now, are there? Mm -hmm. like no. you, you know, there's like a dog or a delivery person or a child <laughs> comes in something. I mean, I've, I'm, you know, I've got one child and I think I've got, ev I've got so much respect for any parent who homeschooled and had a child who was like not of school age. I do not know how anybody did it. And, you know, I think a few of my friends are slightly on the floor. Um, but, <laughs> I haven't tried it. but, you know, you know, I love, I love, I love those two aspects of my work, and I'm, mm. I've never really shied away from being someone who's in the professional world with my daughter. Like she's always kind of come to the office with me. She knows about my job, and you know, she's fairly respectful most of the time of me saying like, and I just said to her now, I was like, turn down whatever you're watching. It's like <laughs> 45 minutes, but please don't interrupt me. Uh, and she's kind of quite, quite good like that. So, but I actually, the funny thing about about all of this situation and I said it to my team actually is that the one bonus like as a CEO you know you work long hours you're out a lot of the time and actually this year 
I've picked my daughter up from school more than I ever have done before and I've been around for her and so you know I think I feel very privileged in that space to be able to have um been able to brought you know been able to manage both of those aspects of life yes brilliant and you mentioned earlier about sort of skills at home that you learned throughout the year that you might not, not have had the time to do before what kind of things have you oh not me these? oh not you I'm not so you oh. <laughs> no literally managing a business and managing a small person oh, that is, yeah. that's my that's first enough. Most <laughs> <laughs> but I think a lot a lot of people have haven't they like a yeah. lot of people, whether that's I mean I've got I've got back into an exercise routine a much more regular exercise routine it's was like for my own mental health really really necessary uh, during lockdown but I think um yeah a lot a lot of, a lot of people haven't they they've looked at different aspects of their life and where they get joy from and you know if, if that's not coming from the social scene that you kind of are in actually having to go out and make that happen yourself I think that's really inspiring it really is really is and i started obviously the podcast at the start of the year yeah. that was my kind of new thing and it's been a real addiction for me just to talk to really inspirational people like yourself of how i've been dealing with different situations it's just i love it but i feel that like it's like in a way it's like kind of like therapy i've said this before in different episodes where just talking to people is like therapy because yeah. not everyone gets it yeah, yeah and actually this is this is really lovely because you know most of the conversations that you have i think that is when you're in a world of spending lots of time talking to people but what um, what you miss I think from being in in and around like an office environment or just not it is like what you you know every call has a purpose mm -hmm. otherwise there's no point for it of course so that, you know, and that's good you know you don't want to be sitting on on zoom calls all day but what it does mean is there's just none of that none of that softer time none of that conversation none of that time where you get to be inspired by talking to someone you don't really know or mm. you know speaking to someone when you're sitting down at lunch in the office and I, this this kind of conversation just doesn't happen it at the moment it. No, it no, it. it's really joy it's really joyful to be able to do that yeah. it's literally all like right we've got 20 minutes we need to solve <laughs> this problem and then jump on another call to someone else and and yeah you just you don't get some of that what would feel like downtime i guess as it's much true just like, just like you say, no one gets, really gets that time anymore just to sit down and just talk to people about whatever they might be feeling that day. So it's really lovely to sit down and just catch up and go through things with each other. How, how, how did you deal with kind of, like you said, that kind of fast paced meeting through Zoom? How do you kind of deal with that? Is that all right? Are you used to it now or do you find it quite a struggle still? I think, we've, I, think I was always, I guess, like the job of being CEO is there's just so many different facets to it. Mm. It's literally like, for, you know, certainly in a creative business like ours, like one minute you're talking to really senior marketers or brand, you know, you know, brand, brand leaders of businesses like, you know, Nike or Sky. The next minute you're having a meeting about cash flow. The next meeting you're literally having a conversation about something that's happening in the office. And so I think I've always been pretty good at being able to turn my conversation around you know mm. so like lots of like you know talking to someone really senior over here someone about office management over here and I, i've always been kind of quite good at that i think what was felt different about this year is just the relentlessness of looking at screens mm. and kind of having there isn't an opportunity to read i'm quite an expressive person to like read people's body language and whether that's like you're having a one-to-one -one with one of your team normally you can kind of you know if it's a difficult one-to-one -one or a, something else you can you know you can change i uh, change the scenery you can take mm. yourself out of that environment you can go for a walk you can read people's body language and i think all of us it takes so much more to get 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 half as far when we're mm. doing everything through through screens but yeah i mean my li like life is liberty life is always busy and slightly chaotic so it's not really changed that much <laughs> <laughs> not in, that, in that good way and still get inspiration from been able to speak to brilliant young people as much as i can it's brilliant because obviously i've worked with you for years now through liberty yeah. and somewhere too as well and yeah. the work that you have been doing is absolutely incredible really really inspirational wow. and yes yeah, pleasure and for those that might not know about liberty yeah. though if you're able to share what they're about yeah that'd be, that'd be amazing yeah absolutely so um liberty as i kind of started off we are um a part creative um agency like a studio creative studio part consultancy and part i guess we've got a called talent incubator so we were started up almost 20 years ago um to as a bit of an experiment to see whether actually you know you could use the power of marketing to try and change the world for the better rather than just to sell more stuff to people that they don't need and that you know that ethos still lives with us today so we exist to create a better future for and with the next generation, one that's sustainable, purpose-driven and inclusive for all. And we work with brands um, and we work with government and we work with charities to do that. So 
Um, we make really interesting kind of content work for brands like um, Foot Locker or Sky. Um, and all of that is about involving young people in that. So we work with, you know, I'm constantly amazed and inspired by working with brilliant young creatives, activists, entrepreneurs, you know, influencers, whoever those kind of young people might be who kind of come into our lives and grace us with their presence. And they make work with us. Um, and so young people get skills and experience. They get access to brilliant other young people, be able to put really interesting things on their CV, always get paid fairly for the work they do with us. Uh, and we get to meet and work with brilliant young talent who make our work more authentic, more effective and more impactful. Um, and we're, yeah, we're really lucky. We work on some kind of big issues that affect young people, affect society and affect business a lot of the time. So, you know, this just this year, we've worked on campaigns around mental health, um, around supporting grassroots kind of communities through sport and others, um, engaging young girls who are not currently engaged in physical education in any way, violence affecting young people, um, bridging the digital skills gap, um, and so many more. Um, mm. So like, there's never a dull moment of working with Liberty and we just always get to work with them in amazing, interesting people. But yeah, that's, that is, that's a very, I was going to say that's a long answer to a short question. <laughs> That's a great answer to that. I, I honestly, it's absolutely amazing what you do. And I, I forgot about this until you last night, actually, that you also work in Africa as well. Is that still going on as well? Yeah, no, but it's just like a sister organisation, essentially. Uh, one of the kind of senior team from um, our London office went uh, out to South Africa, wanted to start something a bit like Liberty um, mm -hmm. eight or so years ago. And the kind of the founders of Liberty, Sam and Michelle, the time of, well, why don't you just start a liberty <laughs> there? Um, and so it's actually now much more of a kind of training vehicle for young people. It's called Digify Africa, but they do amazing work across the African continent, training young people in digital skills and um, uh, kind of civic engagement and just re really, really amazing stuff. And they, yeah, they have a, a, a really interesting model and one that is shifting the, um, the kind of, the diversity stats within the creative industry is greater than kind of, I think, almost anything else, which is, is really, really necessary across that continent. That's incredible. How long has it been going on for now in Africa? It's about eight years. So okay. as I said, they're kind of like, we're not, we're not, we don't do that much stuff together anymore. Um, but we sometimes kind of, you know, like, oh, we're working on this, you're working on this. And, and certainly if we're looking for networks of young people um, out across the African continent, we, we kind of partner with them. But yeah, they, they, they do amazing things with their kind of, uh, I think running a business um, based out of Johannesburg is, you know, is a whole different, that brings with it a whole different kinds of challenges and opportunities than, than one in London. So, Wow, yeah. that is incredible. How, how often do you keep in touch with them over there? Um, well, I don't know what, I, um, I was due to go out there once a few years ago and then I got pregnant and I had my daughter. So I missed out. I've actually never been to the office, but apparently it does, it is very much like um, walking into the Liberty in, in Brixton. Um, not, not as well, I think probably less actually during lockdown. I think just because our, I guess the models of what we make, we've, they focus mainly on the training aspect to that and the kind of creative output is second. And I guess we focus on making brilliant creative output and the training vehicle is part of what we do. Um, so, yeah. Wow, that's incredible. And you're obviously being CEO as well. I know that before that you're managing director and before that you're client service director as well. Uh, how do you kind of merge all these roles together in one? It must be such an incredibly hard thing to do. Um, yeah, it's interesting. because So I so I guess for those people who aren't in the creative or advertising world at all, like um, are kind of the roles within that, within that kind of business is split probably between people who look after kind of clients and grow clients and have, um, understand what clients and, and brands might need. Uh, there's a strategy team who kind of really understand the audience and then kind of creative teams who, who kind of develop the work, we work really collaboratively together. But I've always been in the first camp. So actually, how do you, how do you get brands to work with you and help you understand how we can help um, solve problems that, that, um, that they have. Um, and so I've always done that in my career. And then in my last role, um, before I came to Liberty, I was took on a bigger kind of internal role, like a big HR role, looking after um, the kind of people function of a six, 700 person business. So I spent a lot of time kind of thinking about the internal ways of how you motivate people um, and looking at the kind of internal side of businesses as well as the kind of external side of working with clients. So I guess naturally my sort of CEO role is a bit of a mixture of both of those. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think it's one of those roles where you never really know what you're 
supposed to be doing until you get into the role and you're like, oh, this is, yeah. oh, me too. Oh, this, I need to do this as well. Oh, right. I need to do this as well. Oh, uh, great. Okay. And it does mean different, it means different things to different people. But, but you know, Liberty as an independent business, I'm kind of like the buck stops with me on everything. Okay. Like, like what it means. Yeah, but, uh, well, sometimes it's great. And sometimes it's really hard. You know, I can imagine. I've got to ask actually, you as being CEO, obviously you must set some kind of targets. For, you must set obviously some targets. How do you set targets? Do you set, kind of set them as like a yearly program or break down to that like smallest thing, like say monthly or quarterly or um, yeah, How do you work for you? Yeah, differently. So yeah. Um, like Liberty for us, the two things that we measure, we measure our commercial performance as mm-hmm. most businesses would, but we also measure our social impact. Um, so that is in uh, both like the volume of young people that we work with, but also the experience of young people. So at a commercial level, we measure things every month. Uh, we mm-hmm. have yearly targets, but we measure yeah. things every month. And we set that at the beginning of the year, and then we revise, revise that every quarter. Um, and that's kind of commercial targets around you know, how much um, money we bring in, um, how much of that is spent on various different aspects to that. Uh, and then we measure our social impact every quarter. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so and that, and then we'll be... In fact, actually, I will send it to you, but our mm-hmm. 2020 impact report kind of comes out the first week of January, looking back at the, the last year. So both, in, as I say, in terms of what, um, how many young people we've worked with, in what capacity, but also some of the issues that we've been dealing with. Uh, and then we've got other kind of uh, KPIs that we look at. So like our diversity and inclusion, you know, um, percentages across the business, um, what we're tracking against our kind of brand reputation. So yeah, we, we, we look to set those um, in kind of December, January for the year ahead. And then we monitor them either every month or every quarter, depending on like what feels the most sensible. Okay. And because of obviously what's happened this year with the COVID, I mean, have you, have you, had, have you, have you had to kind of restructure everything or have they kind of stayed relatively similar, but obviously no, I wish, I a different wish way? <laughs> you know what? I, I actually, I would say, so um, I do myself down, like commercially, it's been really challenging. Mm. Um, and we are a smaller business than we were, um, as most kind of businesses in our space, partly, um, you know, partly due to a bit of restructuring, but also just kind of not replacing some roles when, when, when brilliant people were left. And so, yeah, commercially, it's, you know, I think it's been one of those years where everyone just goes, oh, just shut that box up and put it somewhere else. I am really, really proud, though, that at an impact level, we've, like, the thing that hasn't compromised is our, our social impact. Mm. Like, obviously, working, we've worked with slightly fewer young people this year because we've, there's been less work. Yeah. And our, like, the way that our social impact works is, like, the more work we do, the more young people we work with. Like, that's, that's kind of like those are that's the that's the link between those so we work with slightly fewer, fewer young people but the engagement with them has been really 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 deep and I think really positive um for them and for us so yes commercially it's been really challenging um as as it has been for all creative businesses but at an imp- impact level I'm really proud of where we've ended up the year that's brilliant um, yeah that's brilliant and I know that obviously as well recently that you rebranded Liberty to a more um youth-led creative network yeah. Uh, what made you want to rebrand Liberty into that sort well, of format? I think we've always been like, it's, it's um, for anybody that's ever come across Liberty, like we're never just one thing. Mm. Um, and how we, how we talk about ourselves sort of uh, is slightly dictated by what's kind of going on in the world around us. And so we've never really just been a marketing agency. Like that does us a bit of a disservice in that mm. space. Um, we've never, we're not just a social enterprise. Because actually the challenge with um, that title is, is that if you're, you know, marketing director of, you know, where we're working with this year, Foot Locker, for example, like you, you, you don't just want to work with social enterprise who might do some good work. You want to work with a really, really great creative agency. Of course. And if they can give you social impact so much the better. So it's always been quite difficult to describe what we do and who mm-hmm. we are, because also there's another aspect to that, which is like, who are we to young people? Yeah. Like it's not just a relationship that we have with brands. So who, who are we um, to them and what can we give back to them? And so the network aspect has sort of played really strongly into you know, what makes us unique and what makes us us. We actually kind of talk about ourselves both as a consultancy and a culture studio now, which is probably the most apt. So how we help organisations understand the next generation and then how do we make work that's out in youth culture and is part of culture. So, yeah, we kind of look at ourselves and how we talk about ourselves every 18 months or so and actually just say, is it still fit for purpose based on what we do? Um, uh, And also, it's always open to interpretation. If you ask anybody at Liberty to 
describability in like you know two sentences that probably say something different and i love <laughs> i don't know it doesn't make for the best business case but I, lo I love i love that people everybody that works with us or has worked with us has their own interpretation of what they think is important about what we do mm. and it's unique and personal to them it really is unique and um since the rebrand do you feel like your approach has been different to anything or do you feel like the youth has kind of done things differently since the rebrand or has they kind of stayed the same um, but just under a different yeah. sort of bracket I think I think um, so. You mentioned right at the, the outset of this piece, somewhere too, mm. which was the project we ran um, in partnership with um, the Big Lottery Fund, uh, which was around matching young people and, and underused space across the UK. And I think the one thing that we have done over the last few years is, even prior to that, we had a magazine called Live Magazine, which mm -hmm. lots of people may well know. Um, think, yeah. Lots of amazing young talents kind of come through there. I think one of the things that we did do is we often had other vehicles or brands where young people would come and engage like a lot of people would come into the liberty office where live was run and come and work on live mag but would have no idea what liberty as a business did same mm -hmm. with stuff like too. oh cool i'm going to do this thing um and so one of the things that and, and what, what the challenge of that is is if you're trying to run a business which is about purpose and profit like we wanted young people to be involved in the work that we make for brands, not just like as a side project. Mm -hmm. um, so actually when Somewhere to funding ended, uh, we sort of took the decision that it's like, let's make sure that young people know who and what Liberty is. So it's not Liberty isn't just like the creative business and there's another youth vehicle here. So I think in that space, um, we had to do quite a big job with young people and about helping understand what, you know, how we can benefit them. So we started, a weekly kind of opportunities platform so we send really great opportunities insights really amazing jobs out to our network of kind of six thousand young people weekly like curated and like amazing like you know beats will give us like an internship job that's not going anywhere else um, really great opportunities for things so we had to do quite a big job of kind of pulling that together because actually liberty is known to lots of people in the professional industry but actually didn't have much of a brand presence when it came to young people so we've worked quite hard at that over the last couple of years which i think um it's kind of paid off in in lots of good ways yeah I, I still to this day i still feel that liberty and somewhere too has been probably the best company i've ever worked with because uh, they've been I work with a lot of obviously fantastic people, but and I'm not just saying because you helped me the most. It's just everything that you promoted and worked towards to strive for. It was so organized, it was so efficient. Everyone was just so friendly as well. And still to this day, I speak to people like Joseph and, Lu and Louise Bromby yeah. as well, who had on the podcast as well. It's just lovely. And everything you, that you've done for me and everyone else has been really amazing. So I want to say, say thank you from now for everything that you've done. Do you know what? At the end of a really hard year, that is probably the nicest thing anyone can end my year with. So oh, I really? Think, <laughs> yeah. oh, my pleasure. It's not, it's, it's, not, it's not easy. And hearing that makes, mm. it, makes it all worthwhile. Oh, my pleasure. I, I really do mean it though, because everything that you've done for me, I've, I've learned, literally learned so much from you and everything that you've done for me has been amazing. So thank you for everything. I've done it, done it, we, we don't go unnoticed, so thank you. Well, do, do you know what, but I also, the thing about Liberty is like, I don't think we ever could lay claim to any, like the success of any young person, but what I do hope we can do is accelerate that and give, mm. you, know, give you skills and access and networks to, to, to thrive because, you know, I feel lucky that we have worked with so many amazing people over the last, certainly in the eight years that I've been there, but in the kind of full 20 years of our history, I just feel, really i feel really lucky and really inspired every time i have conversations like this mm. oh. realize that the world is not just full of people who want to sell you more stuff and make more money on top of things you know it's like of actually we've got, we've got a view to the world that could be a better place than it is right mm. now and there are lots of people striving to do that so definitely what, what made you actually want to work with the youth in the first place was there something that really sparked your interest um well, so I always like my, my, my plan, my life plan was to work in international <laughs> development. Okay. Go and work and I kind of work abroad. I think I've always been, always really been passionate about driving change, like social change uh, and economic change. And I, do you know what? It sounds really awful, but I looked at all of those like grad schemes to try and get onto those international development courses. And I was like, this looks really long and I'm never, <laughs> I've never got the patience for this. So it was sort of stayed in the marketing world. <laughs> uh, that was pretty easy. And someone was like, do a job? And I was like, yeah, really cool. it's a glass to read, but I set something on site for them. I was like, yes, I do. Um, and, but I think 
like and I'm really you know like working in the creative industries is is brilliant but there's always like I just don't know what's the point in doing something if you're not going to try and make an impact um and that, that, that isn't necessarily exclusive to young people but like kind of creativity and youth I just think go like go hand in go hand in hand because if you want to be inspired and be more creative then look to what the next generation are doing because that's just all any brands are trying to emulate anyway it's like what's of course that? yeah definitely um, and and also you know at a time where you know you, you know certainly when I kind of came to Liberty in 20 you know 2011 I think it must have been now you know, at a time where talking about you know having been really severely affected by the the economic crisis um you know uh, you know just at the time when lots of the riots were happening in london and around and just just realize that young people are really disenfranchised by all of the processes which we as adults have created and feel like it, you know it's it should be our responsibility i'm always i'm so um i was amazed in a negative way at just how little priority young people were given by the government that we've got currently um and just deprioritized and i feel really uh excited for to see how how they are using their power and their voice now mm. so that's again that's a really long, long answer to that but like you know that's an obvious thing like young people are our future and like all of, if we want to try and create impact out in the world it should be to set up a future that they deserve definitely definitely I know that you had obviously a talk on BBC News as well a few years back as well. How was that for you? How was that experience to talk about this oh sort of situation God, as well? That was, <laughs> you know what? that was awful because it was like the 2nd of January and I was just pregnant with my daughter and I had the worst morning sickness. Really? And I'd never been on, the, I'd never been on TV before. I've done like radio stuff. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. Thinking like, I'm, gonna, I'm literally going to do it. <laughs> no. And, and, and then, and then they did this bit where they were like two of us off, two or three guests. Mm -hmm. And I thought that they were going to prep us. Like, how do you stand? Where do you look? Like, I'm on, literally on the news. And, and they went, you've all done this before, haven't you? And the other two guests went, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just literally just pushed <laughs> it out. And I was like, oh my God, what did I feel? I'm really sick. Um, and then it went really quickly. And I was like, oh, kind of good to say a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I mean, I'm not, I'm not particularly shy, but yeah, it's a whole different thing being on, like on the news I was like when do I get to do this again yeah it was um that was I felt like that was an honor and I, was, I showed my daughter the other day and I was like you were in my tummy when I was doing that <laughs> what did she say, what did she say to I that love my and I was like oh, I look young before I had you love because <laughs> <laughs> you seem so natural to me when you're on there so I didn't I had no uh, idea about that yeah no I was really not feeling very well <laughs> <laughs> you played off really well so well done <laughs> It's okay. yeah. But talk about a kind of like a different subject then, obviously the same thing, that over the years you've, won, you've achieved some amazing things, like amazing like awards and so forth. I mean, when you win these awards, I mean, how does that make you feel, knowing that all your work is being awarded with such amazing things like this? Uh, well, do you know what? I, I mean, again, really lucky. I think I felt really like there's some awards that li like Liberty have won um, that I feel kind of a part of and there's some stuff, you know, the stuff that I've won, is lovely and great um and always like slightly I don't know, embarrassing isn't the right word but you're like oh cool i just do what i you know i just do yeah. what i do um and but yeah you know, it, it's it's i'm always really honored whether that's kind of winning an award or being asked to judge judging some young creatives um work just a couple of weeks ago and it's lovely you know those things are are really nice and i just i don't you know i don't think a lot of people do but would never take them for granted but yeah winning awards are uh, winning awards for liberty um it's just it's brilliant and you know often they come at really really opportune times like we won a couple of years ago we won um uh, an, uh, an award from bema which is the british interactive media association it sounds really long-winded but they were really prestigious um awards and they won it we won it for the kind of entrepreneurial business of the year and then we also won their grand prix which is mm, like so. uh, everything like the best of the best and it come just at a time where you know, as I say, balancing like the thing about liberty is there aren't really any other creative businesses that try and balance impact and making money. Mm -hmm. And I know why, because it's really hard. Like of course. it's really hard. Like there's, there's it's been a hard year for creative businesses. And for those of you, those of us who try and reinvest in you know, both in time and in hard cash into into something that's outside of kind of pure profits, 
just makes it doubly as hard. And so the, we, that those awards had come just at the end of like a really hard six months, which are amazing because you are just like, do you know what? It is worth it. Mm. All of the stuff that we try and do and all of the compromises that you have to make, whether that's kind of personal compromises about like, you know salary or stuff like that, or, or, or just like going, right, there is a better way to do things. Like there mm -hmm. is a better way. Like that, like our industry doesn't need to just sell more stuff to people that they don't need or to really try and, you know, try and do that. Like, and so those awards are like validation and they're also amazing internal stuff for teams. That's mm. really, it's nice, nice. Everyone likes to win, don't they? Of course, of course it is. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. Uh, would you feel that those were, were the kind of ones that stood up to you the most in terms of everything that you've achieved so far? Yeah, the Beamer one, I think, was, a spe was, was felt, felt really special. Um, yeah, it, felt, it came at a special time. It, it was probably the first, like, big award that we won with me being sort of CEO, like, a year into that. So that felt like, you know, it felt like something. It felt like something. Yeah, uh, And it was probably, it was a lot of the time, the first, the first time that people kind of went, oh, right. <laughs> Oh, yeah. uh, and so yes, so so that that no, that felt great, and you know, as I say, um, our industry loves awards, um, but that one felt special. I can imagine. Did anything? Did much more come from that in the end as well? Um, we have a really good relationship with um, with Bema, who's the organisation there, and we do some interesting stuff with them and and uh, with some of our platforms. Um, I've made really interesting connections. So we've, we've actually just at the moment got a a new joint venture around um, essentially our ambition is to replace the grad scheme in the in the tech and creative industries oh, wow. with a partner called hidden uh, and they won they won a similar award the year after and so mm. i'd kind of made contact with them so it's just it's a really amazing it's a really interesting um network network of people i don't know whether we actually got any work from it i think you know often in our world like you get more work if you win a big like if there's if it's if it's if it's an award for a piece of your work that's mm -hmm. kind of different but you know i think that that is brilliant but actually being awarded it for a business um is kind of different but yeah it makes good connections and um uh i definitely think we brought the life and soul to that party that year oh, i can imagine that's brilliant it's really well deserved really well deserved I know that obviously one of your awards, the IPA Woman of the Year. Um, oh, award. yes, that's that. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, amazing. I mean, I know following that you had the chance to go to Texas for South by Southwest to give a talk at the all SXSW. Yeah. Yeah. What, what was that like for you to go all the way to Texas to give a talk? Oh, South by Southwest is amazing. I've done three talks there now. It's amazing. I mean, really? anyone that works in the kind of creative space, if you get the chance to go, go i mean I, my talks are probably the least interesting talks there like i don't know self-deprecating but like i kind of I, I went like it's not a cheap ticket to go but if you get a talk you get to go they don't pay for your flight but you basically get like a two thousand dollar ticket for free so i was wow. like i hook up my crook i'm gonna oh get my God. <laughs> that was my main driver I was like, I don't care um but i kind of so i've talked about some really interesting things there but like what i found is like that i mean i, I used to live in texas so i love austin as a city. oh did you great yeah wow. it's really pretty. but um but south by southwest like i think i've actually just i was thinking about it i was looking at it last night but i think at the moment they'll do it digitally next year and tickets at the moment are 199 dollars which is obviously 150 quid or so which is not cheap but if anybody could if, if you're interested in the the wider world of being inspired i've i've never been so inspired by the times i've spent there like you know there's lots of interesting you know really big kind of keynote speakers but just loads of serendipitous things about technology. Like I went to one uh, talk and it was, it was like um, guys from SpaceX, mm. guys from, um, what's his name? I want to say Justin Trudeau, but he's the Canadian prime minister. Um, uh, oh, one of the, he's really famous for, um, for kind of, um, kind of under the sea stuff. And the, the, the talk was space versus deep sea. What's the mm. final frontier? Wow. And they were like playing noises from like, is this in space or is this in deep sea? <laughs> and showing pictures. And I was like, my mind is literally just gone. <laughs> and so like, yeah, South by Southwest is just a, is, is a really amazing place for all sorts of crazy, crazy ideas and interesting people coming together to just to talk about interesting stuff. So yeah, it was, it was amazing. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd gladly go there. And also like drinking, drinking beer and, <laughs> 
tequila in the in the sunshine <laughs> and afterwards is not bad either. It's That's not bad at all. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could go now. <laughs> I have to say, it's like the first time I went. I, I actually no, I brought my daughter when she was eight months and I was still breastfeeding, so my husband had to come out with her. Uh, and then I was like, I'm just going to go in here. I was going to do this. And then the next year was the first year I'd sort of left her alone, and I was like, Oh, she's 18 months or so. Should I go to America all on my own? And I got there and I like sat on the plane and put the yeah. pins. Like, Have a gin and tonic, please. Like, this yeah. best twelve hours I can possibly spend. I'll just, I'll just fly around a bit and come home back to the Oh, what was it like to live in Texas? So you said you lived out there. What was that like? I lived there in a long time ago. So when I was still, when I was still basically at primary school. Oh really? Uh, amazing. Like, I grew up in South London, and um, I love, you know, I've. I've I'm so proud of being a Londoner and a South Londoner uh, and it like growing up it bring you know it brings so much vibrancy and so much diversity and so much access to the arts and everything I feel so lucky but you've always got one eye over your shoulder haven't you like as a parent yes. as a young person and I think like living in 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 Texas when I did at that age nine to sort of 10 11 the freedom to literally parents would be like oh cool go out for a couple of hours on your bike and I'll see you and I was like this this doesn't happen <laughs> what do you mean like what do you mean? Yeah. pre-mobile phone or anything but what was amazing was to have a total sense of freedom um and like Austin's at the democratic part of Texas so mm -hmm. everyone there like it's very early into the environmental scene uh and so like re it's very alternative it felt like a really alternative cool place to live um where you kind of pick up a lot of that kind of activism myself I guess yourself but yeah the freedom and and also being able to come back to England with like an American accent or watching yeah. all the films that no one had seen yet because like do you remember that time yeah. when America, everything would come out like six months before and I was like yeah I've like seen yeah. that film <laughs> 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 like, two months how have you got an accent really? like, believe me I've perfected an American accent <laughs> I remember that whole period where America brought everything out months earlier than UK. Yeah. I remember that whole period. We'd come back with really disgusting kind of sweets that everyone hated. <laughs> we just had to really love because they were from America. Um, yeah, how the mighty have fallen. Hey, wouldn't want to be there now. Exactly, I know. But talk about as well. Um, I know that you were a DNAD judge or design and art direction judge. How, yeah. how, how was that experience of being a judge for you? mental like I've, really? judged, I've judged quite a few things before and it's as i say it's such an honor to judge other people's work and also i think it's amazing because you, you know very very rarely especially not as a ceo now like do i get to sit around and critique even the work that we make let alone mm. someone else's um so it's so, you know it, and it was it's so inspiring like i would if anybody gets the opportunity ever to be asked to judge anything i think feels like it's one of those things that's like that's out of my day job I haven't got the time but actually like I've brought so much of that inspiration back into my day job but DNOD was next level like I've kind of done stuff before where you probably have to spend a few hours pre-reading stuff or looking things through whether that's like personal awards like people awards or whether it's work awards but DNAD sent me over they were like here's your portal to pre-judge everything and and it's like every entry was two minutes long I had 2,000 videos to watch. 2,000? Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I was like, sorry, this is going to take me. And they were like, yeah, this probably takes about two months to do the pre-judging, like, in your evenings. And I was like, oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> this is amazing. So, yeah, I mean, it was mental. Um, but it, and it was also really amazing. Like, I, again, it's one of those things a bit like awards. You're like, why have you chosen me? Because I'm sitting in a room with, like, exec creative directors that have been flown in from Sao Paulo and like you know <laughs> like I'm you know I'm here from Nairobi or someone I'm like mm. I literally just come from Brixton <laughs> and I'm sitting in the <laughs> what's happening this is mad but yeah I mean really amazing because basically like I got to see the best work in the world mm. like, I was doing the media judge so it's like here are the biggest most effective campaigns and again to have the luxury of talking about those with some really amazing people is an experience I'd never forget I think, I mean, oh, I've got the time to do it again for about another 10 years. Amazing. But, uh, it, was, it was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing to be, to be asked. And it's funny because actually there was still, I was judging some, some student awards a couple of weeks ago for Eurobest. And we were talking about one. I was like, oh, I've seen that somewhere before. And actually the one thing about seeing that volume of work is that you, there's so much, you know, you're like, oh, I can remember when I've seen this and that. So yeah, yeah it, it, it's, it, yeah, it's amazing. And, but also 
just to see how competitive those like as someone on the other side entering awards it's like oh i look at it now i'm like we're not going to enter that award because i know there's 300 other people that have entered it and there's very long <laughs> chance so yeah it's kind of interesting to see it from both sides really yeah, I can imagine. And I can at one point you were a board director as well of Iris, which obviously works in fashion. Did that kind of um, help you in a sense of looking for different like, um, fashion ideas or just like, designs in general for different things? Yeah, I mean, Iris is probably more broad. Like it's not, it wasn't, it wasn't just kind of the fashion side of things that I looked at. But I think, you know, Iris really such a different scale of business, I guess, than, um, than, than Liberty. And so I think like, they're the kind of people that would like would do those the scale of campaigns that I was kind of judging. So yeah, really, really interesting. And I think I often I'm terrible for now. Like if I see stuff like whether it's an award entry or sometimes if it's just like a TV advert and I can look at it and I'm like, I know what the client was I know what the client briefed the agency to and I think they really missed the mark on that. Like yeah. I sort of end up writing the client brief loads when I see yeah. work. Um and so yeah it was it was really it's kind of interesting interesting to do that. But yeah um, yeah, I was definitely a place where the kind of the scale of the global campaigns that they do would, would have featured there. I didn't actually get to judge any of their work, which was Oh, really? So, yeah. That's a shame. Oh, I saw a few things where I knew I had friends. <laughs> I was like, oh, my friend worked on that. Mm, I better take myself out of it. But it's really good. Yeah. <laughs> How, is, how, how did you find your Great British Diversity Experiment that you did a few years ago? I know you're co-founder of that. How was that for you? Yeah, that was just that, man, cause that's, that's kind of harking back into the memories now. Yeah, it was such yeah. an interesting time. And I think like you know having been at liberty like diversity and building inclusive workplaces has always been like of such a priority for us and it not because it makes business it was like creativity is born out. i mean we all know this like creativity is born out of diverse perspectives coming together and contributing to make something if we all have the same point of view that's not creativity um but i think um you know it's amazing that that the that our industry well not actually amazing is completely the wrong word it's just about time mm -hmm. that the industry has finally and there's such a long way to go but i think there is a slight sense of relief that at least it is on people's radars because i think when we looked at you know i think i'm trying to think now how many years ago the great british diversity experiment was maybe five five years ago 2015 yeah. yeah and 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 it kind of came together because there weren't a lot of people talking about it like there were a few of us who were the kind of founders and we were sitting around thinking about, um, you know, doing something, you know, what, what are the kind of topics that we're, we're, we're really passionate about. And that, that kind of came out from naturally from the human beings that we are. But it was interesting because it was just that time this McKinsey study came out and it was like, mm. um, uh, uh, companies with women on their board are X percent more effective companies with people of color on them but are x percent more effective and we were like but what yeah it wasn't translating through it's like that's cool that's fine but in the in the creative world it just felt like that was just not on people's radar and you're still having businesses run by you know middle class middle-aged white men and there's nothing wrong with middle-aged middle-class white men but just when the whole company is wrong by that mm -hmm. so the diversity experiment was at the time set the ambition to prove that more diverse teams drive better creative work because actually mm -hmm. it's like, well, what, what, will the, what will that white middle class, middle aged, white ECD stack up, like listen, listen to? And actually, how do we do something that is convincing um, for that? And, you know, not that we should have to do that, but there was a time where the industry needed more convincing than it should have done um, to be more inclusive with uh, the practices around work. And so, yeah, that was how it was born. It was amazing. You know, we had 160 participants pulled together to answer a really interesting brief. We had amazing mentors um, and yeah, the whole pur purpose of it was not just to look at a winning creative idea, but to, to document the journey and mm. to document that and actually to say, and be able to give something to, to businesses, creative businesses, brands to say, look, this is the, this is the positive impact that I have on, you know, if you bring properly diverse teams together that, you know, from my perspective, the whole point, is is that you're not representing i'm not the number of times that i have been in a room and with loads of men and again not for quite a while now not quite a bit at liberty and look around and go well what do women think about this i was like i don't know i know what i think mm -hmm. i'm not representing that and then the same is true when it comes to you know if you have one one person from the black community in your building they, they don't represent 
the whole of that community and actually what we're not valuing is people for their own for their own perspective and actually when tokenism comes off the table you breed true diversity people can be their own authentic selves and that's mm. when that's that's when the brilliance and the magic happens and that's when people can actually be themselves yeah, and and give their perspective and that's an informed perspective based on all of our lived experiences but that's that's when that's when change happens definitely you know definitely I mean? and is that is that kind of one of the reasons why you became a member of the WACL or the Women in Advertising and Communications? Uh, yeah, it's interesting because, um, yeah, that group is, I mean, it's amazing. A, I never thought I would kind of be there. It's like the top senior women in our industry. And it's always looking at one, of, it's always one of those things where you hear, God, they're, they're, the, they're the grown ups. I was a grown up. Um, uh, but they're a really influential group of amazing women. Um, and I think that, you know, I think hopefully what, what I and others kind of bring to that group is, is, is that, is the drive for change. And I think, mm. you know, I, I think everyone's on that journey and they, you know, they have amazing, ambitious women, um, uh, and brilliant, brilliant women as part of that. But I guess, you know, where is that point around, I guess, kind of inclusion and, and building inclusive teams that, that just comes naturally maybe mm -hmm. to those of us who are younger leaders and who kind of fostered those kind of environments and hopefully you know you know liberty being small small compared to lots of the businesses that are there but how do we utilize what what we've learned um to, to positively impact that group but yes and i mean I've, I've it's one of those things where you kind of didn't ever really want to apply because i didn't think i was sort of seen enough and and felt really lucky to be uh brought into that group and and hope that i could use my voice for for good and for action within it oh you definitely deserve to be there the work you've done is obviously incredible it really is and you, being a member of the WACL is there kind of any obligations that you have to fulfill whilst you're there say say any target you've got to fulfill whilst you're there yeah um so I guess the way that it works like there are different um committees like the ambition of that is um the ambition for Wackle is, and it's kind of purpose is to achieve gender equality across our industry. Um, and so there's a number of different ways that the, the, the organisation does that through, so I'm on a committee uh, which awards young, uh, well, well women um, kind of early stages in their careers, um, bursaries for training. Um, so it's called the Wackle Talent Awards, um, and that's about identifying future leaders and supporting them with up to £3,000 worth of training. Um, of their choice so people can apply to that there is a campaigning element to it i'm also on the diversity and inclusion committee which is a kind of i guess again about helping um us understand as leaders of businesses and marketeers um uh, all of the, you know the kind of best practice around dni um so yeah there are lots of different kind of parts of that and you know you can turn up and 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 be a member and have nice chats with people or you can use that and support some of the campaigns that they've got going on which i just kind of try and play an active role in amazing do you get to catch up often with the members there as well um yeah there's lots of formal kind of informal ways there's, it was a big um a, a very event-based pre-covid mm. Um, and so like so many other things which are kind of live event based, they've worked really, really hard to create a comparable experience online. So how you try and, you know, do that. But I've mentored quite a few women kind of coming into that and, and had some really great experiences myself. So, um, yeah, the ambition is that there were kind of monthly meetups that you could you could come kind of come to or um if you were if you were free and available but they've kind of tried to mirror that online and you know i think again like anybody lots of friends who've worked in the live events world and have hold my hat out to people who've managed to so seamlessly curate experiences for people when we're all as i say sitting in the same room we've been sitting in all day staring at a screen and making you still connect mm -hmm. um with people emotionally i think is really is really great and Michael has done a great job of that that's amazing. And to finish up, actually, what does the future hold for you? What are you working on at the moment for next year? Oh, gosh, what does the future hold? holds Christmas. That's the yeah. um, no, the future holds, um, as I say, I think, um, I think we, we like, like, like a lot of organisations, I think, you know, we've looked at as, as Liberty, what do we do? Like, what's our purpose in the world in a, in a I'd love to say post-COVID world. Mm. But, you know, in everything, you know, whether it's um, COVID and lockdown, the, you know, the very necessary um, uprising of Black Lives Matter, 
um, the rising kind of mental health crisis and economic crisis that we're facing, I think we've just done some some work kind of pre Christmas and actually just saying that what what what's Liberty's role out there in the world? What where where can we genuinely make the most impact? Mm. And probably being more specific about that than we have been before, and looking at specific areas, you know, sustainability being another big one, but around you know representation, sustainability, mental health, and how do we at a brand level and at a young person level, how do we really how do we really power up in those mm-hmm. things? Um, so yeah, I mean that's like new year, new mm-hmm. you know, new year, new you, all of those. That's that's probably like what my immediate future holds. I wish my future hold getting on a plane and going somewhere sunny. Yeah. I wish. <laughs> uh, and it, and it will do. Oh God, don't we all? Um, yeah, and I think that's. I think you know, keeping a keeping a happy, healthy home again. A feeling the end of the year feeling pretty exhausted but feeling very fortunate and really lucky to have friends and family around so i think never under um never underestimating the the importance of of people um mm. and their experiences and yeah just getting on a dance floor that's exactly <laughs> that's I cannot wait to have somewhere where there is really like i can't wait to be Don't somewhere blame you. <laughs> well, I'm still somewhere having a dance. I, I probably miss that more than a holiday. I would say. I hope that's what my future holds. How about you? Um, you know what? I don't know. I've got, got, got a lot of ideas, but I just can't wait to start performing again, actually, because saying to, uh, today, actually, I posted um, our last performance, actually, with the orchestra. It was uh, literally bang on a year ago in France. Literally, today, a year today, it was, was our last performance. And knowing that we've transitioned from like performing into podcasting, I, I absolutely love podcasting, like my new addiction now. Just talk to everyone is what I love it. Yeah, I just, I just miss, I do, but I do miss this as well that I do miss the performing side of things though. Because it's one of those things as well where obviously we've got offers to do things and obviously they fall through again or we get offered to do things and then they, they, they disappear. I was like, oh. but it's yeah, just, but like, I, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you see, you see, you know, actually, it happens yeah. all the time. <laughs> they come to me with an idea, perform, doesn't happen, thinking oh, that was a waste of time, but thank you anyway. But I just can't wait for the whole thing to be over and just have a big celebration by the end of it. But you know what? I'm just keeping positive, just yeah. working hard as always, keeping happy, learning new things all the time. And like you said, I'm, I'm just feel very blessed that I've still got a job to go to as well got my health, got my friends and family around me. And I, I just feel very happy and positive about the whole thing. Obviously, it could be a little bit longer, but there's nothing much we can do now. So I'll just wait. Uh, well, thank uh, you so much for having what a, what a delightful conversation. And as I said, I think the hip hop orchestra is like amazing. Maybe let's, let's, let's set that on agenda. 2021, there will be some sort of event when we can, we should try and do something together. That would be 100%. Amazing. But thank you so much as well for oh, today. Thank you so much as well. Thank, it's thank honor you. to be asked. It's an absolute pleasure. So lovely to talk to you, Alex. And oh, well, quickly, how can people find you actually as well online, just to make sure? Oh, yeah, you can come and find me online. Um, uh, LinkedIn, that's probably there. I, t- I, I had to take the rest of the socials off my off my phone for um, those purposes. I'm on uh, I'm on LinkedIn, Alexandra Goat. I'm on Instagram. Less professional names, so maybe we won't share it. I'm not okay. on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, find me on that or, 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 or look at us. I mean, if anyone ever wanted to get in touch with Liberty, we're just hello at liberty.co.uk. Um, oh, brilliant. Line, if you're interested if you're a young person that wants to get involved in the creative industries or you want to know more about it yeah hello at liberty and it comes into my inbox as well so um i'll gladly answer it oh fantastic alex thank you so much for today i really love talking to you hey thank you take care thank you too bye, bye everyone bye.